呢，呃，这一个 track 啊，这一个 track 是开，就是 open document format。那 open document format 它本身是 libreoffice 的原，跟 openoffice 跟 libreoffice 的原生格式，但是它现在已经是一个独立的国际标准了。那我们今天第一场，我们请到 libreoffice 跟文件基金会的创始者之一。好，他的名字叫做 Italo Ignari， 来、right? ，Italo Ignari，OK、okay.。那他呢？最近，因为我们最近有在研究，就是 Open Document Format 跟微软 Office 存起来另外一个叫做 O S M L 的格式。好，他有他们比较出一些非常有趣的结论啊。那我们这一场大概一个小时左右，会来探讨这两种格式之间有什么不同。那 O D F 作为一个公开国际的标准，它的优势在哪里？啊，那当然，我刚才有特别情商，就是他请他英文会讲慢一点，哦，所以大家可以专心的听。那我也有跟他说，就是我们会比较 focus 在格式跟格式的比较，而不是软体跟软体的比较。好，我们今天这场并不是要比较说。微软 Office 跟微软 Office 有什么不同？不是，我们要比较的是格式，因为格式通常来讲，尤其我们现在政府有些在推动，哦，它格式来讲相对是更重要的。那如果大家有兴趣的话，可以现在已经可以逐渐投进这一个地方，因为我们可以看得到未来会有一些很好的发展。OK， 那 Angel 就是一个 issue，or you will start。那我们先把麦克风交给大佬，我们热烈掌声欢迎一下。呃、uh, ，I try to speak、uh, in a in a English in a clear way.、Uh, if you have any doubt, please、uh, ask me to repeat.、Uh, that's not a that's not a problem.、Uh, I'm going to cover、uh, the topics that you see on this title slide. Uh, I think the most important fact is that uh, when uh, when HTML was introduced, uh, in fact we had a kind of revolution in the way that people were managing contents, because we uh, up to that day we were used to.、Uh, To have a, content, a different content or a different technology for contents、uh, for each software. With HTML,、uh, we standardized, or the people that invented HTML and Tim Berners-Lee、uh, most than anyone else, they standard they created an open standard. So today, when you open a website. You don't think about、uh, the browser you are using, and you don't think about the technology and the content that are on the website, because you open the website and you are sure that you can、uh, see the website、uh, in the same way, independently from the software, the, the operating system, the computer, the platform that you are using. The same does not happen when、uh, we open documents, although we have the technology. To make this possible, and I will try to explain you why moving to a standard format、uh, and moving to open document format would be a very big advantage for all of us, and especially for young people, because uh, uh, young people have、uh, an entire life in front of them when, while、uh, they will exchange digital documents. So、uh, I'm over 60, and、uh, I will not work for many years. But you all will be working for many years exchanging digital documents. If you would be able to exchange digital document in the same easy, transparent way, you access web pages. That would be an incredible advantage. So we are talking about standard. What is a standard? A standard、uh, is a document written by a number of people and based on consensus on the format of the standard.、Uh, for instance, here in Taiwan,、uh, you have electricity is 110. 
but any kind of uh, uh, power supply for your phone, uh, if you go to another country and if you come to Italy, my country, the electricity would be 2020. But you can use the same uh, power supply for your phone because uh, the standard makes it transparent, the fact that you access uh, the electricity. So electricity is a facility that powers your phone independently from the uh, voltage that you access. That should be the same for documents. You access a document independently from the software you use. Today, you access document based on the software that you're using, and this is unfortunately not appropriate. Uh, which are the advantages of open standards? I think uh, there are many, but there are two which are bigger than others. One, reduce cost. Because if you exchange a document, and the document is always the same, is, is, uh, is the, the appearance and the contents are do not change uh, if you change platform, computer or software. You don't have the cost of rewriting the contents or reproducing the contents with a different technology. And uh, is a building block for innovation. Because if you are able to use a format for every document, then you can build on that format to add functionality. If you have a different format for every software, you will never have a format that is the best one to reproduce all contents. Uh, there are two kinds of uh, standards. Uh, sorry to use uh, uh, Latin uh, names, but this is how they are known. They are de facto, and uh, you can consider that the format of Microsoft Office is a de facto standard. It's de facto because Microsoft Office is the software used by most people in the world. And then you have the URE, which means by law. And ODF uh, is a standard by law. And it's a standard that has not been uh, suggested, created, developed by a single company but has been created by a consortium of companies. And this means that it's If you use an open standard, if you use HTML, you're not, you, you, and, uh, you, you're not giving any advantage to WordPress, to Drupal, to Joomla, or to any other software that you may be using to create a website because everyone is at the end creating the same uh, document, the same standard document. The same should be with, what, with the documents that we create ourselves with our contents. It, there is not a lot of difference because in many cases you use a software to write a page that then it becomes a web page. So why the document should, shouldn't be as standard as the web page. This would uh, allow interoperability. Interoperability, what does it mean? Mean uh, that we do not exchange any more paper documents. When I when I graduated at the university, uh, the PC did not exist, so I had to write my thesis with a typewriter. And of course, uh, the only way I could give my thesis to another person was by making photocopies of the thesis. And that was a copy, a physical copy of the document. Today, we have the opportunity to have digital copies. So you write the thesis on a PC, and if it is a standard document, you can publish it in under different platforms and it would be accessible independently from the platform. You, you could probably read a thesis uh, on a smartphone, on a tablet, on a PC, using the same standard format. If you use a format that is not standard, you have to use a different software to read that, doc, that format. And this is, is a limitation. Uh, so interoperability doesn't mean exchanging documents means uh, working better together.
because I can give you my contents, you can add contents and give me back the document and I will be able to read your document in a transparent way. Even if we use completely different operating system, because I use an operating system in Italian, of course, and you use an operating system in Chinese. So the, the content becomes completely independent from the hardware, from the platform, and from the software. Because, of course, I use a software in Italian, and you use a software in Chinese. So if someone looks at both of us while we are creating the document, it seems that we are creating different documents. The reality is that if we create a standard document, we create it independent, we create the same independently from the platform. What is interoperability? Interoperability is technology and we have all the technologies, is data, and we have all the data to, to support interoperability. Uh, unfortunately, we, we not always we have the law, so the institution means the governments that uh, create a law for interoperability. And last, and this is a real issue, is probably the biggest issue, human, it's our, it's our mind that is uh, stuck with technology that we have been uh, teached when we were younger. And although you are a lot younger than me, you have been younger at school and uh, the, the reality is that no one explained us how to build, uh, how to create interoperable documents, even when we are in primary school. So when we get to the university, when, when we are adults and we start creating a lot of documents, in order to uh, become uh, to, to, to become acquainted with the, with the standards, we need to relearn all the process of creating documents. Unfortunately, this is something that happens everywhere. There is not a single country in the world where people is educated in creating digital documents from the first year of their schools. And interoperability is also connected with openness. So, so open interface, open data, open standards. The interoperability is based on the fact that you have uh, technology can be transparently shared. And then you have open format. What does it mean? It means that you have a standard that is published and is available to everyone. It means that if you are able to develop a software you are able to develop a software that supports a standard. So an open standard, easy to deploy, uh, makes content independent from the platform. Uh, this is what we were used to do. So you have Microsoft Office, you have Microsoft Office formats, and you have content. And the content is related to the software and vice versa. If you use a standard software, a standard format, you can use a different software and you always create the same content. Because a standard format makes it easy for software developers to write the document in a way that is exactly the same. And we will see that more in depth uh, ahead in the presentation. And then you have proprietary formats. Proprietary formats are exactly uh, reproducing uh, the, what the software wants to write it in the document. And this creates a mechanism that is called lock-in. Uh, there is a company that is very famous and very skilled in lock-in to the point that they have created a manual. This is a Microsoft manual that says how to lock in your clients. It's true, again, it's not Photoshop. This is a PDF document. If you want the document, I can give you the original document. So it's not a joke. It's a real document. Uh, and uh, if you don't believe me, you should believe to what Bill Gates wrote, wrote that uh, we have to stop putting any effort into this and make sure that office documents very well depends on proprietary capabilities. 
Anything else is suicide for our platform. Yes, it is a few years ago, but it does not change. And it does not change because uh, Microsoft uh, with Office owns a 25 billion dollar, US dollars, not Taiwanese dollars, uh, business. And of course they protect this business by blocking in users. You can imagine what happens if they, they supported open standards. Immediately the same format would be supported probably by 50 software and there would, would not be an incentive in people to buy Microsoft Office instead of other software. And the benefit of interoperability, as we said, are big ones, but there are financials. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of data on this, but um, we have, there is one research made by the US government. Uh, this is National Institute of Standard and Technology. You see, US Department of Commerce is a, is a ministry of the uh, US government. So what they've done, they've done a cost analysis of inadequate interoperability in the capital facilities industry. Uh, what is the capital facilities? Is the, is the building industry? Is the industry that builds uh, skyscrapers, houses, uh, and, and so on? And they calculated that architects and engineers that are creating these documents, they, of course they are creating documents that are designs, so you have documents like uh, uh, AutoCAD designs, but you also have contracts, you also have a list of uh, parts to be uh, shared. And uh, these are the interoperability costs. So, uh, this is the, in, the, in the planning uh, phase of the, of the building. So when you plan a building, you have a data translation cost is $2 million. Manual re-entry cost. So you, because this, the documents are not standard, you are forced to rewrite the documents to give them to, to, your, to the other people. And this is $462 million. And then you have uh, reworking design files, it's uh, less of a million dollars, but if you look at, and uh, if we go to the, to the next phase, there is constructions, you add another 28 million dollars, which means that at the end, you have uh, half billion dollar, so half of a billion dollars that is created in, by interoperability. This is money that is just thrown out of the window. And I'm not saying window by chance. Uh, because uh, if you use a standard format, all this would not happen. You would reopen the drawings, you would reopen the contracts, you would reopen all the documents without the need of rewriting them. And this is just one industry in one country, although a big country, but one industry in one country in the world. So you can uh, understand how big uh, is the interoperability opportunity in terms of cost uh, if we really switch to standards. And uh, we have the standard, because ODF uh, is a standard not, not only because it's, it's, in the, it's in the name, it's in how the document has been developed. ODF has been developed is, a, is an ISO standard, has been defined with, a, with an open process. Uh, a number of companies have sit, sat around the table and have created the definition and have created the different uh, components of the standard. The standard is evolving slowly, but is evolving always thanks to a number of companies that sit around the table. So there's not a single company that creates the format. The format is created by consensus. And this means that users are represented as much as companies. And so the format 
will be will answer user needs as much as company needs and has been approved and is available for everyone you can go to the oasis website download the specification for free and you can uh, read the specification and learn how to write uh, an ODF file. OASIS is a consortium and there are uh, over 600 affiliated organizations and one of them is also Microsoft. I'm a representative of the Document Foundation but Microsoft, uh, you find governments, that is the Dutch government, you have uh, uh, individual users, you have uh, libraries, you have uh, companies, so it's a very diverse uh, or consortium of people and companies. And this, may, this represents the advantage of the standard because the standard is not related to a single company, a single technology, a single government. It's related to a number of these uh, uh, entities that find a consensus. And therefore, it protects everyone against the insert of a single uh, entity. And it's open, has been published, and uh, if we look at the stack, at the ODF stack, uh, you see that there are all standards. So you, you, you have ISO standards in the, in the lower stack, you have ISO and W3C standards in the middle stack. And you have again ISO and W3C standard in the upper stack. So you don't, ODF does not reinvent the wheel as we say, but it uses standard, existing standards when they are available of course uh, to describe components. And so for instance the vector graphics are SDG. And SDG is already a standard, so you don't have to rewrite the standard to implement the vector graphics inside ODF. And of course, it's a specification. So it's a, at the end, it's a file that describes the same file. So if you open the specification, you will understand how the specification is written, is technically written. We are now at ODF 1.2. And uh, ODF 1.2, for instance, has introduced the formula language, which is open formula. And uh, we are now working at ODF 1.3. ODF 1.3 will probably be released in 2020. And uh, uh, based on the experience, will probably be approved in 2022. And it's not that the, this uh, means that it's a slow process. Uh, it has to be slow exactly for what I've told you before. Either there is consensus or it's not an open standard. If, if the process is fast and, and therefore it's just related to a single product or a single company, then it would not be an open standard. So it has to be slow because everyone has to be able to con read, comment the proposals and make their amendments in a way that at the end everyone is happy with what there is written in the, in the standard. Uh, to maintain the standard, what we organize? We organize Blackfest. What does it mean? It means that at least once a year uh, we collect all the representatives of all the organization, all the software developers that create ODF documents and they, we put them into a room and uh, they open the documents and see how the different software manage the standard. So this is a way for everyone to create the most similar documents that it is possible. Uh, because they see how other software have um, solved the same issue and they can implement the same uh, uh, process and technology or the same algorithm because that allows all software to write the 
the file in a format that is uh, very consistent. And I can tell you that if you take different software, the difference in uh, size of the file between the different software is below 10%, which means that the size of the file, and the file are XML based, so it's a, it's a text file, uh, the, they are extremely similar. Exactly because uh, we work to have them the most similar as they can. And uh, these are the extensions. You may be familiar with some of them. Uh, of course, the most used are ODP for text, ODS for spreadsheet, and ODP for presentation. But then you have graphics, you have charts, you have images, you have databases, and you have formulas. Uh, and uh, ODF uh, is a standard in UK, and it's also a standard in other countries, and Taiwan is one of these countries. Uh, each country, and we are extreme, I mean, really happy to be here because uh, uh, I think that if a country uh, adopts a standard, shows the the how much they care for the improvement of interoperability between people. And this is something very important. And uh, uh, every country is deploying ODF in a different way. Of course, we have different approaches and different cultures. So uh, there's not a single way to implement a standard inside a government. <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, though, uh, there is a battle of two standards. Uh, this is the logo for the F uh, Office of XML, which is the Microsoft standard, has not a logo. So I say, don't like bananas. Uh, I use the logo with bananas. <laughs> so bananas are the, are the only thing that I don't, I, I don't eat. I eat every, everything else but bananas. And don't ask me why, because I don't know. It's just a rejection of my body with bananas. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, having two standards creates issues. For instance, if you have just one standard, you, have, you can have economy of scale, uh, you, you don't have vendor locking, uh, UX facilitate exchange. Having two standards because Office of XML has been approved as a standard, but unfortunately has been approved as a standard, has never been implemented as a standard. So you have a description of Office of XML, but the file that you create with Microsoft Office are not corresponding to the standard description. And actually they are different for every single version of Microsoft Office since 2007. And they are different, uh, we will see, uh, in a significant way. Not just small differences, in some cases they are very important differences. And why it is not a standard? It's very clear. If you deploy, again, uh, think again, uh, let's mention again HTML. When we, uh, when uh, HTML was created, HTML made all the page description language existing at that time obsolete. So either you were using an obsolete description language or you were switching to HTML. And of course the strength was that HTML was written in a way that made it easy for everyone to write the web pages. So it was easy at that time to motivate people to, to, to take all the past, uh, throw, not throw away the past, throw away the technology, keep the content and uh, uh, rewrite the content as HTML. Uh, Microsoft wants to have a standard format that is compatible with the past. And this is just impossible. It's technically impossible. Either it is standard and therefore it is clean, or it is compatible, it is not clean and it is not standard. Uh, of course, uh, 
we can go deeply into this, what I'm telling you now. Uh, I don't have the time, the time but if you want, uh, I can show you the, the differences in the file uh, to, for you to understand very easily where the non-standard issue is. And uh, also, you see the difference in the standardization process. Just look at the last line. ODF uh, 720 pages were reviewed in 1,239 days. Means that review means uh, you read and you make comments. This 7,200 pages reviewed in 800 days is not physically possible. Uh, 7,200 pages printed are I as I am. It's 1 meter and 75 centimeters. So just imagine that you read this uh, and you study and you comment it in two years. It's not like reading a, 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 a fiction. It means uh, commenting, understanding, studying. So it's not possible. It was not reviewed properly. And uh, what is also missing from Office of XML? Reuse of standards. Uh, ODF, again, Dublin Core, SVG, MathML, Xlink, SMIL, Xforms, these are all existing standards. You find ISO numbers for all these standards. So when you describe them, you don't have to rewrite the standard. You just say, this is uh, Xforms. Xforms are uh, the forms uh, that are embedded into documents. If you want to make a document uh, and you want uh, to have only a portion of the document that can be filled by the user, you use Xforms as a language. You don't have to re-describe the export language. You just say, for this specific feature, we use Xforms. Office of XML uses only the Dublin Core. Why? Because the Dublin Core describes the XML uh, marking language. So either you use the... I, it wouldn't be XML-based if they wouldn't reuse the Dublin Core. But the only thing that they have reused uh, is the uh, markup language, are not the standard components. And I'll make uh, uh, a small gimmick to make you understand this. So we all agree that this is a, a red square, and we call it red as humans, and the PC, the PC call it at FF0000, with hexadecimal description. Okay. This is the way ODF writes the color. So you see, format, color, and the number. There's no way, it's consistent. Every software is the same. This is creativity at its best degree. Because you have W, which means word. Okay, you say, W means word, so I will find an X for Excel in front of in front of Excel file. No, you find color. <laughs> and you find A instead of B for PowerPoint. <laughs> so I don't think that even an artist could be as creative as Microsoft has been while describing colors. By the way, the two F that you that you are added on the Excel description. If you embed uh, an Excel table with a red uh, cell uh, and you do it several times, at the end uh, you will get a, a yellow cell because it will take the first six um, character of the number, so it will the, the color will become FF FF zero zero. And this has been approved as a standard. <laughs> and uh, you have uh, your own calendar, uh, the Chinese calendar, but you respect the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar has been, uh, uh, sorry, uh, has been created by the Pope.
but it has been created in a way that allows the description, a standard description of days. Okay? You recognize the Gregorian calendar. Excel does not. Because uh, February 29, 1900 is a day that has never existed, but it has existed only for uh, Visicalc, Lotus 1, 2, 3, and Excel. <laughs> I can understand, so the, the, the two guys that developed Visicalc uh, in, the, in the 80s did not know about the calendar, and I can understand. That was the first deployment. There were software developers. They couldn't imagine that the, there were uh, rules for the calendar. Okay, but the bug was the, the, this leap year bug was uh, uh, filed for the first time in 1979. So it's a 38-year-old bug that has not been sold by Lotus 1, 2, 3, and has not been sold by Excel. And uh, I, I'm not a developer, but I think that this is something that is unacceptable. Because what happens when LibreOffice, when Apache OpenOffice, when Caligra, when Numeric write a Microsoft compatible file, they have to introduce a day that has never existed. Instead of uh, writing in a clean way, they have to introduce a day that has never existed. So it's, uh, it's just weird that you write a supposed standard by introducing a mistake. And of course, uh, interoperability becomes an issue. Because uh, if you read that, you have to consider the mistake in every date in the spreadsheet. Then there are issues with other calendars. Uh, uh, they, they, they don't. Uh, uh, they are not relevant for uh, Asia, but they are relevant for the Middle East. So all Arabic countries, uh, because the uh, Excel uh, consider as work days uh, or as festivities only Saturday and Sunday which uh, is not true for all Arabic countries and for Israel, because they have uh, different festivities. So in the Arabic countries, uh, they are Thursday and Friday, and in Israel, they are Friday and Saturday. We have Saturday and Sunday, but you cannot count work days uh, in Arabic countries by considering Saturday and Sunday as uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the no working days. Uh, then uh, there are issues with language codes because uh, uh, Microsoft Office does not use uh, standard language code, use numbers. There are issues with graphics, uh, and uh, I think the, the, the most funny issue is when you think, when you, you look at the SDG. SDG is a standard, but Microsoft Office uses DML. DML was uh, proposed in 1998 to W3C, was never approved. W3C what did, uh, took uh, DML and the competing standard, and out of the two standards developed SDG. So they, they took the two different standards. One was proposed by Apple and Microsoft, the other one from Adobe. So they took the two standards, they said, no one is good enough, we, but we take the best of the two and make one standard that is an open one in SVG. So development of VML was ceased in 1998, but was approved as a standard in 2006. So it's, uh, you, you, you understand uh, what the power of a large company as Microsoft can do even to standards. So the, the, the technology was deprecated since six years, but uh, they, they managed to have it approved as a standard. And then you have conflict with MathML, uh, and uh, you also have uh, uh, non-standard cover codes and so on and so forth. I can go for 
probably one week in telling you these kind of nice things. Uh, but we switch to the to the next uh, topic. So, uh, especially if you if you are uh, if, if you know technology, you know that <coughs> IT systems are complex. And uh, uh, there is a visible complexity and an hidden complexity. And in a document, uh, we have uh, a lot of hidden complexity because uh, for us, creating a document is a natural feature of human being. But you have to consider that when you insert text, images, formulas into a document, everything uh, has to be managed by the computer in a different way. So for us, they are all components of the same document, but for a computer, they are, they are components that are managed in a different way according to the available technologies. So there is a complexity that we don't see in documents, and a standard has the objective of making this complexity manageable as not the objective of, ma of, making the com of increasing the complexity, as the objective of making the complexity manageable. So if we are able to, if the, the document once uh, is uh, at computer level, machine level, is still human readable, then uh, you are able to understand uh, issues a lot better that if it is not human readable. You probably have seen uh, the documents, the binary documents, when you have uh, nice smiling faces, and uh, so the, the, the document when opened, or when broken, is totally unreadable by a human being. That is a binary, usually it's a binary document. Uh, XML-based documents are human readable. So uh, an ODF file, is a zip file and uh, is uh, consistent across uh, applications. So ODF, uh, we will see that. It's, uh, if you uh, explode the zip file, the, what the resulting uh, uh, folder is always the same for independently from the application. If you go to Office Open XML, you have a different set of XML files by application. And binary files are used for almost everything. So you, you have images are binary files, and sometimes for backward compatibility, you find that maybe a table that instead of being uh, human readable is a binary, it is uh, saved in a binary format. So it's not human readable. I'll make an example for you uh, using uh, a very well, I don't know how much, but I think that to be or not to be is known also in, uh, by Chinese people. So this is chess wheel. To be or not to be, this is the question. And this is the way that LibreOffice would write it into a file. And this is the way that Microsoft Office would write it into the same file. So it's two keep together, there is a space, B, comma, keep together, there is another space, or keep together, there is another space, not, keep together, there is another space, two, and so on. And this is the way that of Microsoft Office 2016 writes every single text document. If you don't believe me, I can show you the documents. So instead of having a simple document, easy to understand, human readable, you have a document that is technically compatible with XML, but not to the point of not being not anymore human readable. If you compare this document, uh, I've used the, this is uh, false text, it's lorem ipsum, it's false Latin, it's not even Latin. Because I wanted to avoid uh, language-related artifacts. So I've used a neutral language that has no real uh, representation. 
and this is the length of the file, this table, when the document is created and saved by LibreOffice and Microsoft Office. So you go from ODF 1.2, any version of LibreOffice is 222. If you write it with Microsoft Office, ODF it twice as much, but I think it's nice to look at how the two software write an Office Open XML file. So LibreOffice writes a non-native format in 1,157 lines. Microsoft Office 2016 in 11,665 lines. It's the same document, it's the same two-page document with a, a bullet list in the first page and a table in the second. This is because that is described uh, as I show you, so each paragraph is one line. And this uh, is because one, each object is one line, or even more in some cases, because you have the color and you have also other attributes. So, uh, and uh, if we go inside the, the folders, this uh, is a folder of uh, ODT, so it's a text uh, docu ODF document. You have content, uh, XML, uh, you see these are the documents, the, the XML document that that allow you allow you to to read it and the computer to visualize it on the on the, on the screen. Uh, sorry, uh, this is DocX. As you can see, DocX has, uh, is not one level; it's two level. You have, you go to Word and to Word you have document. So uh, and and remember how many folders because that's not the, the same number of folders is not true for Excel and for PowerPoint. If we compare a spreadsheet, ODS, uh, as you see, is very similar. You have content, configuration, meta, thumbnails. So the the, the file is uh, structured in the same way. XLS has three folders, not two. Because you have the first one that has Excel up there, then you go to Worksheet, and then you go to Sheet 1. And then we, if we compare presentation, again, you know, ODF is boring, it's always the same. Uh, of course, in a presentation you add pictures, you add media because you may have a video, but then you have content, meta, settings, size. And this is a PPTX file. PPTX, uh, you go and you have PPT that is not consistent because you have Word, in the case of Word, Excel, but XL in the case of Excel, and PPT for, for PowerPoint. Then you go here and you have slides. And then you have an XML file for each slide of the presentation. Not a single XML file, but multiple XML files. So there's no consistency in the standard. And uh, these are deductions of a stupid Italo Vignoli. Uh, so LibreOffice developers are a bunch of geniuses. <laughs> and Microsoft House developers are a bunch of uh, you can add whatever you prefer. <laughs> Unless uh, we, and uh, in Italy we say that sometimes we don't, we, 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 we think uh, of the others in a wrong way. We say uh, that this is a sin, but sometimes by being a sinner you, you get it right. And uh, Microsoft Office XML files are artificially complex to make it difficult for everyone else to read the same file. Because uh, the protecting these files protects a market that is value $25 billion. And uh, I'm approaching the end of the presentation. This was the situation, uh, as you can see, this was the situation in 2006. And from the numbers that I've shown you, you see that the situation has got worse. 
which means that the situation of Office 2007, the ratio between open document and this one was 1 to 3, now it's 1 to 100. So the complexity has increased. And these are five types using uh, attacks to security. Majority is office documents. And if you look at the office document, this is a research uh, made by the German uh, uh, government. So it's not something that we do. You have PPT, DOC, XLS, XLS, RTF. You have also PDFs. Because PDF, uh, unfortunately, for its nature, uh, makes it possible to inject the binary code inside the, the PDF. And uh, so, what I say, this is a Zoroaster table, uh, 2000 years uh, before Greece. I was not there. I was born a few years after. Yeah. So, but it, this is not interoperable. You need the guy that has written it to, to understand. So, no interoperability. This is the known standard in 2000 uh, after Christ. It's uh, Office of XML, as you can see, is the 11,600. And it's a false interoperability because you can open it with Microsoft Office, but not, with, not always in a, in a proper way without the software. While uh, you have the possibility of uh, having a standard, which is an ODF file, you see the difference. I mean, it's visually. This is the content of the file. You see the paragraph. You see how easy to read it is. And this is true interoperability. And uh, I think uh, uh, I gave you probably even too many information. So if you have some question, uh, I will uh, give, uh, leave my slides to Franklin, who is in uh, first, uh, first line, and uh, Franklin will, uh, will uh, make it possible for you to, to get the slides. And uh, questions, please, and don't be shy. If you don't have questions, I become a bad Italian。那他先介绍到这里。那这一场其实很重要一点讲到OSML跟OBN。那ODF它的一个重点，其实我们不是讲相容性，我们不是讲 聽得到嗎?沒有什麼問題,那他給了很多沒有趣的比較。I'm wondering how do you think about uh, uh, <laughs> 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 I'm wondering how you think about uh, online documents like Google Doc or uh, OneDrive that uh, most people are becoming to use those those document on the and that's kind of lock, lock in their, their own system. So do you think we can somehow use some uh, open, open their program? So the, the question is, uh, uh, with the evolution to uh, online uh, office suite, uh, what about uh, document format? And I think uh, that the, the, the answer is easy. Document format should be support open.
course, uh, no one wants to lose uh, a market as important as UK, and uh, now as important as UK plus Sweden plus France. So they are developing ODF support. They are still uh, uh, a little bit behind in terms of uh, quality of ODF support. And of course it depends also from the complexity of document. Because we, if we speak about Google Docs uh, or Office 365, we, don't, we, we are speaking about basic feature uh, Office Suite. Uh, the number of features of uh, those two suites is not comparable with the number of features of uh, LibreOffice, Apache OpenOffice, Caligra, and, uh, the, and Microsoft Office, of course. We are speaking about uh, uh, more or less uh, 6,000 features for a product like uh, Microsoft Office or LibreOffice to 1,000 features for uh, online office suites. So it's uh, one sixth, uh, and of course, uh, it is. Uh, uh, there's no real uh, office suite that is able to reproduce the complexity of document that can be reproduced with a desktop uh, with a desktop uh, office suite. Uh, on the other end, uh, they allow collaborative editing, uh, which is a very interesting feature. And uh, of course, uh, collaborative editing uh, is a challenge uh, for standard uh, formats uh, because uh, uh, you not only you add uh, uh, contemporary modification to the same file, and of course, uh, using XML, uh, you have to be able to write uh, the different modification in a way. That they are not, they are, they can be re, uh, reproduced uh, by the document uh, if open on a different platform. This is uh, not yet the case. For instance, if you if you use uh, Google Docs uh, to edit uh, collaboratively a document and then you save the Google Doc document, uh, you don't have the collaborative editing represented in the file that you save. So. And this, of course, could not be the standard version. So uh, we are working, uh, and Google uh, has started to work uh, at uh, helping uh, uh, improving ODF uh, with collaborative editing features. Uh, by the way, uh, there is an, an, uh, a cloud version of LibreOffice, which is uh, offers uh, collaborative editing features. Uh, uh, they're still basic ones, uh, they're not advanced ones, uh, while uh, the objective is to get uh, advanced collaborative editing features. Um, the, of course, uh, the, with, the, with the cloud, uh, there is a, a, a new, you can say a new generation of office suites. Uh, uh, we have to think uh, about the fact that if you deploy an open source office suite, uh, you will be able to deploy both the desktop version and the cloud version at the same time, uh, which is not possible uh, with proprietary office suites. So it's not going to be possible with Google Docs or with Microsoft Office. But what is important is uh, support of the standards, it, independently from the software. So we, we should be able to mention 1,000 software that support a standard format. Google我們一年會辦那去年其實基本上現在從 就是你的那個項目符號還有編號不要太多層了太多層的話你存的奧迪也不會有問題其他的基本上都還可以好那我們在開放最後一個問題的話我們要時間到還有沒有人想要再提問來來來來來來來來來來來來來來來來來來來來
Office Preference Offering Options. Um, the default for file format LibreOffice say, say is um, ODF 1.2 extended. And I'm curious why it is choose instead of um, the, I assume that the extended version is not released yet. So the extended version is a superset of the 1.2. Uh, there is an agreement between uh, all software makers that in order to have uh, the uh, new feature stable when the standard will be released, uh, we, in, we start introducing uh, the new features into the format uh, using the 1.2 extended. So, of course, uh, LibreOffice supports also 1.2 standard. At the moment, uh, what I can tell you is that the extended uh, does not change the standard in any way. It's, uh, it's only adding a couple of features. Uh, but the reason why we uh, default to extended is that this is the only way that we can debug the format before it becomes standard. In a, in a way that end user will not even understand. Uh, when, uh, when the UK government uh, has moved, uh, they asked us to, to standardize on 1.2. And uh, we, uh, they, they, then they made a, a research and they saw that 1.2 is uh, backward compatible with the 1.2 extended. Is backward compatible with one or two standards, so you are you have a, basically a standard document even if you have uh, the additional feature. Okay, now we will give a round of applause to Dr. Dalo.